and it was almost as if I instantly didn't even have a boat. I saw a big kind of roller kind of wave coming in. And there was an actual moment when the balance of the boat changed, and it might have been only an inch or two degree-wise. It just completely swamped and, and overwhelmed uh, 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 the back of the boat. And I said, guys, get in the bow, we're going to go down. Late in the night of June 26, 2010, a large wave capsized the setnet skiff Paul Revere, throwing the crew into the waters of Bristol Bay. The crew survived in the water for two hours because of the inflatable personal flotation devices they wear as part of their standard work gear. Bristol Bay is home to the largest salmon fishing fleet in Alaska. Set nets are gill nets anchored to the shore and stretched out into the water perpendicular to the beach to catch salmon as they run along the coastlines towards their spawning grounds. Fishermen often use open skiffs, like the Paul Revere, to work the nets and harvest the salmon. There had been a slight pressure change in the weather, which we do pay attention to, and I commented something about, well, we might get a little pounding, but that's nothing unusual because the weather up there changes a lot. I took our ATV to go drive along the beach to the fishing site because we were going to go set the net. So we got in the boat and then um, we were going to, I was taking our new crewman with me. There is these rollers uh, on the shore. And what happened is we came up and the current grabbed us and basically threw us onto the beach. I rushed out to go help push it off. Tyler hopped out of the boat to go help push it off. We probably worked for, I don't know, 20 minutes or something. It seemed like a long time. The boat had uh, taken on a lot of water uh, as well. But, but after a couple tries, we finally got the uh, boat off the beach. I had Tyler get in the bow and haul the net up with him. Initially, it's like, oh, can I bail a little bit? No, we need to get the pump up and going. Our neighbors had a running line, the set net anchored line that's there, and they didn't have a light on it. You know, I learned later, uh, we went and uh, caught, uh, caught a running line, our neighbor's running line. The current was running this way, and we stopped, which means that more water is coming in over the stern. So at that point, everything happened really fast. So I'm getting the pump up and going, and everything is fine. But whenever I raised the motor even a little bit, it pushed the stern down with the weight, and I didn't want to do that. So I tried jogging it a couple of times, and then I'm thinking, you know, what could I do really fast? You and know, kind I of behind, uh, behind Shannon's shoulder, uh, I saw a big kind of roller kind of wave coming in, and it just completely swamped and, and overwhelmed uh, 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 the back of the boat. It was almost as if I instantly didn't even have a boat. It was no longer a concern or anything. And I said, guys, get in the bow, we're gonna go down. You know, the boat starts going down and going down and going down, and we're scrabbling up to the boat to get to the, uh, to, to the top, and we just thought it was gonna go sink like that. And so when it went down part way, it flipped up back over us and pinned us in the water. I was inhaling water, I was screaming. Um, I started flailing around underneath the boat and I couldn't feel the guys. And I went and locked right onto Shannon's arm and I went and tugged myself first and then with the other arm I went and gave Shannon a tug and we went and popped out, uh, popped out of the boat. We all wear the Mustang self-inflating PFDs with the CO2 cartridge that fires when it gets wet. And we, we all had them on. Don and I had been in the back and we had had so much water washing around by that point that our vests had fired. It was amazing because it instantly just molded to you and it held in your core heat, which was just something I had not thought about, and it supported your head. With all the gear that we have on for fishing, you know, the, the weight of me is probably 240 to 250 pounds. Uh, Tyler, our deckhand, is six foot eight, and uh, with all of his gear and that put together, he weighs about 300 pounds. And uh, the PFDs were keeping us well above the uh, well above the water. You know, originally we were just going to stay with the boat, and we yelled, we did all the stuff to attract attention, but there was no one there and there wasn't a really any good way that we can get purchase and hold on to you know, the aluminum sides uh, of the boat and whatnot. And you know, Shannon got swept off at one point and I had to go reach out and snag her and you know, get her back on, on, on board. So we decided to abandon the boat because we needed to get out of the water. So we had Tyler drop off the bow and when he got to us, we all grabbed on. So we started kind of floating along and we talked each other through it, you know, let's kind of use this motion and conserve energy. And 
go kind of trying to angle into shore but not trying to do a perpendicular line because that'll just tire you out. What these uh, PFDs uh, did is it went created one less worry for us. Instead of worrying about staying afloat and expending energy to stay afloat, we were able to go take stock of the situation, figure out what we needed to do to get out of the water, rather than figure out what we can do to survive in the water. We actually were making pretty good progress, except to the point as the closer we got to land, the faster the current got, and it kind of created a slingshot of it, uh, effect where it flipped us right around. There was a line and there was a buoy. And just as we were saying, hey, look, there's a buoy, whoosh, we were past it. And then we realized proportionally how fast we were going along in the current. The crew passed numerous set net lines and fish camps, signaling the entire time with a flashlight and firing off rounds from a 357 handgun. When none of these efforts raised an alarm, the crew turned their attention to self-rescue because soon the tide would turn and sweep them out to sea. I was sidestroking like crazy to go get to the, uh, to the next uh, running line, which we did. Um, in this particular case, is a really thin uh, running line. But then we had real problems because there were three of us with a big drag and it pushed the whole line underwater. So I have the shortest arms compared to the guys, and I was just drinking water. Probably one of the hardest things to do at that night, uh, at that night was to actually let go of that running line because Shannon couldn't breathe and she let go. And Tyler and I weren't gonna go and let Shannon uh, wash off by ourselves. But um, the next net that we hit was about 14, 12 to 1400 feet line going straight into shore and it was going straight into our camp. The line belonged to my cousin. We decided that we had a different strategy this time. We were going to go split apart. Uh, since I had, I was able to swim better. I was going to go race up the uh, the line into camp as fast as I uh, I could, while Tyler and Shannon went and made their way up by themselves. So I just held on to him like a little kid in a floaty pool, and Tyler walked in until my feet could touch, and then I just told him, "Go, go, go, go." and I literally crawled onto shore. I continued to go stagger up the bluff because I know that Shannon's cousin uh, uh, was, is a registered nurse. I knew that she would be able to go help us out. And I had pretty much just about enough strength at that point to get to their cabin door, knock on it, wake it up, wake them up. And is at that point is like collapse. <laughs> The crew survived in the water for almost two hours because they were able to stay afloat with their PFDs. They went back to fishing within days. If, uh, you know, if we did not have the PFDs uh, uh, during this accent, you know, I don't think that we would have, uh, uh, we would have been able to, uh, to survive. Salmon fishermen have the highest number of fatalities among fishermen in Alaska, 47 deaths between 2000 and 2012. It is an industry with fatalities, and we had two funerals this last summer and two the summer before, all from people who were not wearing PFDs. Such a small investment that you can take. Put it on, it's not uncomfortable. And so the PFDs, they kept us afloat, of course, is their purpose. They also insulated the core, which is what you want to protect in a cold situation. So that helped a lot. And the third thing I think is just as important, it was a mental boost because suddenly you felt like, I don't have to worry about that component. It's taken care of. I can concentrate on directing us towards shore or anything like that. None of our energy or mental focus was wasted on, oh, I gotta stay, you know, I mean, we did have to move with the waves a little bit, but I think that that mental boost of having something that was working like a charm, it really helps in a survival situation. For more information on choosing a PFD that's right for you, visit our website at cdc.gov.